Ah, greetings and salutations, my most excellent friends. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. It is Sunday once more. That means it is time for the Chi Ranger Adventures podcast. That's right. This is season number two, episode number 11. Booyah! And since I'm recording this after a fine day of work, I raise my glass to you on the YouTube viewing audience. Mmm. <sighs> And of course, to you on the listening side of things, whether you be, uh, whether you are at the blog site listening to this live on ChiRanger.com, or if you're downloading this through iTunes, whatever the case, thank you so much for stopping by and enjoying the podcast and just having some fun. You know, I, like I say, I love doing the podcast, and with this new video aspect, I'm really jazzed about it. So thank you. Thank you so much for spending part of your day or part of your week listening to me. So let's go ahead and get things started with the news. Now, last week I spoke about this case where this American English teacher, you know, was being extradited back to Korea to face charges of molestation. Now, to prove that this world is incredibly small and that we are all interconnected, one of my viewers contacted me and let me know that his girlfriend was actually tasked with being his translator during some of the proceedings. Now, that really blew me away because never in a million years would I have ever suspected that I would have some kind of connection through some kind of weird way to this case. But that's really, really cool. Um, I'm not going to go into details with what was shared with me, but that, that, that that's pretty cool. Um, I shouldn't say pretty cool that that happened or that, that person was put in that perspective, but that there's that kind of connectivity, that kind of relationship with people. That's really, really blows me away. Um, second item of the news is Korean elections have come and gone finally. Now, unlike in America, where I think the election cycle lasts pretty much two or three years at this point, Korean elections are not as expansive in terms of duration. Now, a couple of months leading up to the election cycle, you do get television ads which, since I don't watch a lot of Korean television, I don't see, but one of the ones that was kind of interesting was someone was parroting uh, Angry Birds and was dressed up as one of the red birds in it and being flung across things. But what you do see are trucks driving through the neighborhoods with big loudspeakers on them and expounding on whatever the candidate's platform is. Last few weeks, around the subway stations especially, You'll have the candidates and their staff dressed up in, in uniforms with whatever, uh, you know, uh, district they're trying to represent. And they will greet every single person that comes by there. Uh, so they'll say and then bow and then and, and it, it's really interesting. So last week, as I was leaving the subway station <laughs> to go to work, we had a situation where, you know, four different groups of candidates were all uh, trying to, you know, vie for your vote. And you had a situation where one candidate's group would would say hello and then bow and then the next one and the next one and the next one. It was pretty crazy. Um, but the cool thing about Korean elections is that it is, for most people, a day off. It's a public holiday. So all the schools were closed. Most businesses were closed. Uh, a lot of the academies were not closed. Uh, my friends who work at the place where I used to work here in Dongtan uh, did have to go in. Um, my university was closed, which really didn't help me because I don't teach on Wednesdays. Uh, and a few of my other colleagues who work for businesses in Seoul had the day off. But uh, I really think, you know, that's a good way to approach things. Because when I was in the United States, um, I really hated Election Day because, you know, you always had to make a special trip to go out to a place to to go to the polling area. And if you didn't go first thing in the morning, it was a pain in the butt. Um, Arizona, as much as I loathe a lot of their policies, did have one thing that was kind of good. 
And that was they sent an absentee ballot to everyone who was registered. So there was no excuse not to vote. Because one of the reasons I think that America has such a low turnout rate is that it's a pain in the ass to go to the polling place to actually vote. So if if you have an absentee ballot, you can do all your research, you can tick your ballot, and then just mail it or take it to the polling place and drop it off. Now, I normally, what I would do is, is I'd get the ballot, i do all my research, and about a week or two ahead of time, just mail it in and just be done with it. Uh, here in Korea, the U.S. Embassy is now starting to publicize a lot of information about how to get your absentee ballot if you choose to vote in the upcoming U.S. elections. So if you're in Korea and you are planning on voting come November, uh, check out the U.S. Embassy website, all the information on how to register, how to request your absentee ballot is there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, also coming up, uh, next Wednesday, or the Wednesday coming up after this podcast, I will be recording an interview with Arirang Radio, which will be broadcast on Friday evening, I think between 6 and 8 p.m. I'm not quite sure the exact time, but I'll be on Arirang Radio, so you can either tune in live via your iPhone application, your your Android application on the on your uh, computer, or afterwards, I will, of course, get the MP3 and I'll weave that into one of the travel segments on the podcast because we'll be talking about what I do in terms of generating uh, travel blogs and destination videos. And I'm looking forward to it. Adrian Lee is the host of that program. And I met Adrian, I think, I want to say a little over a year ago when we were both at the COSIS uh, press briefing. Um, he used to be a presenter on an entertainment program for Arirang, and now he is on a radio program. So that's pretty cool. And, of course, the last item of news I want to talk about is the Lady Gaga concert here in Korea. Now, I will admit that there are a few songs of Lady Gaga that I do enjoy listening to. Uh, but I think Korea is a little off kilter with, with this latest issue. So what happened is that uh, I think it's uh, Samsung. Oh, man, I should have written this, written this down. Um, I'm not sure which one of the conglomerates is sponsoring. Uh, that's Hyundai. Hyundai Card is, is sponsoring the concert. And because it's a live concert, they have to go through all these hoops to get regulation, what it should be rated as. Um, and the ratings board came back and said that because of the songs and the nature of the songs and the provocative nature of the dance numbers, this concert will be limited to those guests that are 18 years and older. And if you are under the age of 18, there's no admittance, period. Even if you go with your parents, you cannot go to this concert. And this is the only concert in all of Asia where Lady Gaga has come into this particular issue. And I really think that is a shame because a lot of the, I guess, complaints are coming from religious groups. And Korea is, I want to say about 25, 30% Christian. And it's very evangelical Christian. And I really think that you know, it, it, it's fine. You know, when it comes to religion, I have no problem with any religion, you know, imposing, say, a, a moral standard on their own congregation. What I do have a problem is when groups start to imposing their moral values on others. And I see that in the United States. I see it in Canada. I see it here in Korea. And I really think that their fear that Lady Gaga will instill some kind of homosexuality or uh, satanic worship within the youth population of Korea is just grossly unfounded. And I really, uh, I, I really wish the ratings board uh, wouldn't have ruled this way. It's it's not like you can't go online and see the concert. It's not like you can't go online and see the videos. All this is really saying is that hey. You know, you have to be 19 to drink alcohol, buy cigarettes, and, you know, go in the army. But, hey, you know, 18, 
that's when you're legally mature enough to actually go out and see a Lady Gaga concert. You know, you can't go home when you're two years old and click on YouTube and see the video. You know, go figure. Uh, but anyway, that 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 was a you know piece of piece of news that came out just a few days ago, and I, I'm really I'm really surprised that that Korea took that standpoint. Uh, the other thing that is is coming up on the Chi Ranger vlog channel is that. I hope to be putting out uh, a few more videos. Uh, my goal for the next, I guess, two months while I have time left here in Korea is to put up a video on days when I don't put out a travel video. So on Tuesdays and Fridays when I release a travel video, I don't think I'll be putting out vlogs, but Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday I'll be putting out vlogs. And then, of course, Sunday will be this video the podcast video so uh, if you have thoughts on that or things that you'd like to see uh please let me know uh, what i hope to do is kind of include snippets of different lives maybe have the videos be you know less than a minute to show different aspects of living in korea answering viewer questions and so forth so that's that's what's going on with that so there you have it that is segment number one that is the news and if you are watching on youtube Thank you very much. I hope that you will take this as an opportunity to come on over to either iTunes or ChiRanger.com and download the podcast so you can hear the rest of it. But until then, we'll see you later and we will continue after the jump.